Ide TV KPM. Hello, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. I bid to all of you who are watching Road to Success SPM 2020 with me, your host, Waini Carey. Alright, sebelum kita mulakan, seperti biasalah, Waini nak ingatkan kepada anda semua yang sedang menonton untuk sentiasa menjaga SOP. Bagaimana caranya? Sentiasa cuci tangan, pakai hand sanitizer, pakai pelitup muka dan paling penting, jaga jarak sekurang-kurangnya 1 meter. Alright, so pretty Previously, we have learned Kesusastraan Melayu with Afiq Shazwan and also Puan Halima. And now, moving forward to our next subject, which we're going to learn and know more about the technique, tips in English, a literature in English or in Malay, we call it Kesusastraan Inggris. Alright, that is why we are going to invite a very special teacher today. But before we proceed with our lesson today, let us see our teacher's profile. Settle for good when there's excellent. All right, so that is the motto for our teacher today. That is Puan Renuka, or we call it Teacher Renuka. How are you, teacher? Good morning. Good. I'm good. Good morning, Wani. All right, teacher. Thank you so much for spending your time with us today in Road to Success SPM. So, teacher, before we start, I would like to ask for your opinion on this subject because we know literature in English consists of four formal genres which are short story, poetry, drama and also novels. So maybe you can give your opinion whether this subject is actually a very easy subject to score for the students who are taking this paper. Okay, thank you, Wani. Yeah, sure. Right, yes. Um, literature in English is definitely a subject which is easy for all of us to score, mm -hmm. okay, provided we do our reading. Mm -hmm. Read, understand, analyze and you score. Yeah, okay. A very short and simple statement from teacher which literature in English is actually a very easy subject. Yes, teacher. Yes. All right, so now we are going to hear the student's opinion on this subject. Let's go. Didet TV, KPM. A very good morning. My name is Claire Lilani Gomez and I'm a Form 5 student from SMK Convent Clan. I'm taking the Literature in English subject for SPM. The reason why I love this subject so much is because it not only helped me in the way I write my essays, but it also helped me in the way I think and analyse texts nowadays. Now, ever since I've learned literature, I've learned to not only read something for what it is on the surface, but also think about it in a more deeper level, analyse it properly and form opinions and responses in my head. And later when I write them down in my essay, I get to use my responses and opinions and base them on the textual evidence that I've just read. And I can safely say that I can do that well now with the help of literature. DD TV KPM all right, we can clearly see that the student gave an opinion which English, literature in English is a very easy subject to score. All right, so before we proceed with our lesson today, apa kata kita berehat dulu seketika dan kita kembali lagi dalam Road to Success SPM 2020. Dede TV KPM Bertemu kembali dalam Road to Success SPM 2020 bersama saya host anda Wani Carey. Baiklah seperti sebelum kita mulakan subjek kita hari ini Wani nak ingatkan untuk sentiasa menjaga SOP, basuh tangan, pakai hand sanitizer, pakai pelitup muka dan paling penting jaga jarak sekurang-kurangnya 1 meter. Alright, Tisha, are you ready for our lesson today? Yes, I am. Alright, before before that we are going to invite and welcome our student from SMK Convent Klang to join us today. Hello everyone, good morning. Okay, maybe all of you can unmute your mic to say hello and say hello to your teacher. Hello. 
Hi. Hello. All right. So these are all your students. Hi, Nisha. Oh, yes. Hi. Mm -hmm. All right. So today you will be joining us and also with our teacher Renuka to join and know more about literature in English. All right, teacher. Without further ado, if you are ready, you may take the stage. All right. Uh, good morning, girls. I can see you are all um, bright-eyed, wide awake, all <laughs> ready for your exams. Tomorrow is going to be your big day, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yes. It's going to be a big day. I'm sure you are all 100% prepared. Mm -hmm. Not to worry. Have confidence and you will do very well. Okay. Now, what are we going to do today? We are going to look at Literature and English 2205 for the SPM Year 2020 candidates. Okay. Now, basically, whenever we look at literature, important considerations are you should know that there are four sections. Okay? Section A, short story. Section B, novel. Section C, drama. And section D, poetry. Okay? Right. Now, when you get your examination papers, what you should do first is please read the instructions at the front of the paper. Read the instructions, they are very, very important because they tell you how many questions you are supposed to answer. Yeah, so every section you choose one question, and each question comes in a set of three A, B, and C. Okay, now if you look at short stories you would have studied at least three to four short stories. Do not answer all the short stories. Choose only one short story. Okay? All right. Now, let me ask you something. What is the greatest challenge you face as a student? Anyone? Okay, what? anyone would like to answer? Okay, Claire. Yes. I think as a literature student, the biggest challenge I face is probably remembering the quotes and lines that I'm supposed to remember from the novel itself. That's probably my biggest challenge. Okay, mm -hmm. very good, Claire. Okay, so in terms of remembering quotes, so mm -hmm. that is your biggest challenge and I believe that would be your biggest fear too. Okay, someone else, what is your biggest challenge? Yes, Marsha. Marsha. I think the time teacher because we only have like two hours or something and we have a lot of things to write in that two hours. Right. Okay. Very good, Marsha. So your biggest fear is time. Yes. This paper is a two and a half hour paper. And within two and a half hours, you are supposed to answer four questions and each question has got three parts. So yes, definitely that would be your biggest fear. Okay, now let's just look at some of the challenges with uh, students normally face. Okay, first mm -hmm. thing, time allocation. That's the biggest fear because I always have students who come back to me and they tell me, teacher, I had so much to write, but the time fled. Mm -hmm. It flew so fast, I don't know whether I have written enough or not. Okay, so fear number one, challenge number one time allocation. Challenge number two, how much do I write? Yeah, within that time, how much do I write? What should I know? That's challenge number three. And challenge number four is always any student's fear. Should I memorize or should I not? If I should memorize, what should I memorize? There's so much for me to know in a short story so much for me to know in a drama, in a poem, yeah? So, should I memorize or not? And everyone is afraid of that word, memorize, okay? Then the next one is, how do I organize my responses? Do I just put it in a lump sum like that? Or do I organize it, you know, and put it on a platter for you to see, which says, this is what I have for you, okay? And finally, I don't know why, but everyone says, poetry is so difficult, <laughs> yeah? Mm -mm. But ask yourselves, if you love songs, songs come from what? Lyrics. Yes. And just imagine that poetry is a lyric that you have. It becomes easy 
you enjoy it and the battle is won. Keep All not right. to worry. <laughs> yes, key. All right, so let's look at time first. The time allocation. It's only a one paper. No two papers for literature and English. One paper, time, two and a half hours. Allocate your time whereby you spend 35 minutes for each section. So imagine you have got four sections, 35 times four will come to how much? Jasmine, how much is 35 times four? Jasmine. All right, do a quick calculation there. <laughs> it's okay, maybe other can answer okay, also. Okay, Karishma, how, how long will it come to? Okay, very good, 140 minutes, mm -hmm. okay? So you have approximately 140 minutes to answer four questions and you have another extra 10 minutes. Yeah, two and a half hours is 150 minutes, right? So 10 minutes for you to look through your questions, understand what the questions are, which question you would like to choose to answer because there's a choice, yeah, especially in short stories, there's a choice. But in all the other texts, you do not have a choice because you have already prepared for those texts, okay? All right, now let's take sec uh, part A. All right. For each question has got three parts. Part A, you only have uh, approximately five minutes, mm -hmm. which means the minute you read in your minds, you should already process what are my content points and straight away let your hands do the writing, okay? Um, every part has got different marks. A is five, B is eight, C is 12, which means a question which has got 12 marks, you spend more time. Mm -hmm. So you spend approximately 18 minutes for your C questions. B questions, eight marks, you spend approximately 12 minutes. Okay, right, so that is the first challenge, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, once your uh, first challenge is over, now you figure out how much am I going to write, okay? As I mentioned earlier, all your five mark questions the content points are within your extract. So it is just a short extract. The answer is within the extract. Do not, and I repeat again, do not go beyond the extract given. Answers are there within the extract. Take your answer from there. Mm -hmm. yeah? You do not need to explain what you know of that extract because your answer has only got three to five points and they will always say, give three examples, three reasons, or three something, something, something. So you can just take out the points from there and paraphrase using your words, okay? All right, now, do not copy the whole text in a question. The whole excerpt which is given to you, do not copy. You answer the question. That's the reason why you have an examination. An examination is meant for you to examine and answer according to the needs of the question. Yes. Okay? Right? Yes, yes Wani? Yes. Agree? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Now, do not lift sentences. You know, lifting, that means from the time a capital letter starts right to a full stop, don't lift the sentences. Okay? You can lift words from there, no problem. But don't leave complete sentences because it shows you have not understood the question. You mm -hmm. might not be answering according to the needs of the question when you lift blindly. Okay? All right. If it's an eight mark question, for eight mark questions, answer according to the question given. Yeah? And mainly in an eight mark question, look for these keywords. Describe explain how what okay so once you know this you should be able to answer according to the needs of the question basically eight marks are all comprehension recall mm -hmm. okay and a 12 mark question huh this is where the hot element comes in the higher order thinking skills 
whereby you are required to take a stand. Yeah? Take a stand and then answer with your personal opinions supported by knowledge of your text. Keywords, discuss, do you agree? Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Simple, isn't it? Yes. Right? The important keywords. Right. Mm -hmm. Important keywords. Very important. Okay. Now, challenge number three. Challenge number four. What should I know? Masha, what should you know in your texts? We should know the textual evidence and the quotations. Yes, very good. You yeah. should know your text very well. Any examination is that. When you go into the examination hall, you have got the text in your mind. Yes? yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then the next challenge is, should I memorize? Karishma, should you memorize texts? I think that it is important to memorize specific quotations so that we can give evidence for our answers, but not blindly memorize as we go. Yes, yes. very good. Excellent mm. response, Karishma. You memorize to support what you are saying. So once you know these ideas, it's easy for you to answer your questions. So why do you need to be afraid? You don't need to be afraid. The battle is won because you already know how what you're going to write on. You know, oh, these are certain things that I should know. I can paraphrase. I do not need to memorize everything because we are not robots, right? So yeah. we only memorize certain phrases, certain quotations, that's it. But we understand our text. Text, okay? all right. But what would be helpful for you if you look here is if you know your poems very well. Why? Because poetry is actually the easiest section for you to answer. Because it's only this short. Mm -hmm. If you have a, a novel, you have got 120 pages, 140 pages. Whereas a poem only has got maybe 8 lines, 12 lines, 16 lines, 24 lines. That's it. So memorize your poems, know your poems first. And it's important, you know, I give you a little trick. Answer your poetry questions first. Because poem is still fresh in your mind. So answer the poems and then go into the others, the short stories mm -hmm. or whether it is novel or drama. So I guess you're okay with that so far? Yes. Yes. yes? All right. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Next. How do I organize my responses? Now, this is quite tricky because students always come back and ask, how do I organize? How do I know which is important? Which comes next? Yeah? Okay. Just imagine this. If you have an onion in your hand, okay? I hope you all have peeled onions and you have cried with the onions. Okay? Right. But just imagine, in order to go get to the sweetness of it, you have to peel the onion, the skin, and then maybe go layer by layer. Yeah. So that's exactly how writing is. We use the formula which is known as peel. P-E-E-L. P for point. Point. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Simple. You have a point. Okay? E for evidence. evidence. If I have a point, I must elaborate on my point using an evidence. Then I must explain. So the evidence that I have, I should be giving details to show why this evidence supports my point. And finally, I have what I call the link. Link. Okay? What is meant by link here is you link your response to the question. Mm -hmm. Never ever answer whereby you have memorized the whole text and you think, oh, I should give a lot of evidence. Mm -hmm. But what you have done is you have regurgitated all the facts, whatever you know, you just put in without analyzing the question and answering according to the needs of the question. Mm -hmm. Okay, So use this formula point, 
evidence explain link okay and make sure your answers are in paragraphs paragraphs okay answer in paragraphs never ever lump the whole thing into one and say i've done my work now it's for the examiner to choose what he or she wants don't do that you are trying to convince your examiner you know your stuff you know how to relate to your stuff and now you are telling them i have put it beautifully for you presentation is very important isn't it yeah so present your ideas well so that's why paragraphing is so important okay all right let's just look at an a question i'm sure all of you can see this question now let's see if you are able to answer this question and this question came out in 2017 mm -hmm. spm the winter hibiscus by min fong ho okay let's look at this question can i get somebody to read anyone who wants to read do a quick reading okay maybe we can ask julia to read okay julia go ahead it's not clear oh can you see the question now okay i'm so okay that first summer their family had also going going smelting every night while the vast school swimming up river to spawn and had caught enough to fill their freezer full of smelt and it's not clear sorry at dawn at, at dawn, dawn yes the dew was still thick on the grass they had also come the golf course at the country country club for night crawlers Con country club for night crawlers filling up large buckets with worms that they would sell later to the roadside grocery as store fish, as Gro the fish bait okay the the money from selling the worms enabled them to buy a 100 pound sack of the best long grain fragrant rice continue julia and that and that to get there with the frozen smelt frozen smell and home grown vegetables and them through most of their first winter okay very mm -hmm. good julia sorry that you were not able to see some of the words yeah. clearly yeah thank you julia but yes you have seen uh, most of what this text is on Okay, now let me just see whether you are able to pick out the points. Yeah, remember mm -hmm. in all A questions there should be at least 3 points. Even if you have 4, 5, it does not matter. Mm -hmm. But pick out 3, 4, 5, however many points, quickly pick it out. Anyone who wants to start with the first point. Question, give 3 ways how the family gets through their first winter. Okay. So What is the first point that you can take from here? Genli. Genli. Hello. Hello. Uh, okay. Uh can can a screen be shown to the question I cannot see it. Ah. Sorry. All right. All you right. want can to you see? Can you see now? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. She says how the family gets through in the winter. Right. They they have gone smelting every night. Mm. Hmm. Very good. Okay. So you have got one content point there already. Yeah. Where they had gone smelting every night. Well done, Genli. Okay. Can I get another response from someone else? Okay, Jasmine, give me another point. Um. They had also combed the golf course. Okay, and uh, what did they comb the golf course for? For night crawlers. Oh, yes, excellent. So you have mm -hmm. got a content point two there, whereby they have combed the golf course for night crawlers. Okay, very good, Jasmine. Next point. Um, can I get? Let's see, Marsha, give me a point that you can find here. Um. They filled up large buckets with worms and to one, sell. Yes, very good. To the roadside. Okay, good, very good, Marsha. So they have filled up large buckets with worms 
to sell to the roadside grocery stores as fish bait. Simple, easy to find your points there, right? So you mm -hmm. have already got three points. But if you look at it further, there are more than three points here. One more point, Claire, what else can you find here? The money from selling the worms enabled them to buy a hundred pound sack of long grain fragrant rice. Okay, very good, Claire. Okay, so you can notice here that there are more than three points. Well done, girls. Okay, so point number one, you can see clearly they have gone smelting every night and they caught enough to fill their freezer full of smell. Now, what is important here is what you gave me was you did not give me that whole sentence from the beginning to the end. You chose what you wanted, yeah? What words you wanted and exactly you have given your first point. Point number two, what did they do at dawn? At dawn, they combed the golf course for what? For night crawlers. Whenever you are answering, ask yourselves these questions. What, why, when? How, which, yeah? The WH questions will always help you and always focus on the question. So here it says, how did they go through their first winter? Okay, so what else did they do? They filled up buckets with worms to sell. Okay, what else did they do? The money which they got, they used it to buy fragrant rice. So the details are all there. Your content points are there. Straight away, you do well. Okay, so yes. you don't need to worry on how to answer A questions. See, all A questions, the content points are there. You don't need to look outside the extract given to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, next. A B question. Let's look at this B question. Okay, now normally B questions come in two ways. They can either be umbrella point questions. Imagine having an umbrella mm -hmm. and the tips of the umbrella are your points. Okay, or it can be what we call a storytell question. Storytell means you're narrating. You're saying this happens, this happens, this happens, blah, 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 blah. It's like telling a story. Okay, so yeah. depending on the question, you answer. All right, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's look at an example of an umbrella point question. So, for example, in Birds of Paradise, the question... How do the birds react to Lani's desire to be different? So this is where you need your content points, okay? Content number one, you are going to look at the two chief roosters. You're going to compare and contrast how they react to her desire to fly. So that's your content point. For example, the old chief rooster was rather uncompromising. The new chief rooster was accommodating. So you get your answer according to how they reacted to her desire to fly. So you have got content one, old chief rooster. Content two, new chief rooster. Content three, how did the oriole and peacock react? Yeah? What did they do to motivate her? Okay? And finally, you look at the hens. How did they encourage her desire to fly? So you have got your content points. And once you have your content points, your answer is there on a platter for you. Okay. Now, organize your ideas according to priority of information. Mm -hmm. What is important is what you give first. So in these content points, the most important is how the chief roosters react. Okay. So organize accordingly and clearly show the difference in the reaction of the birds towards Lani's desire to fly. Easy, isn't it, Wani? True, teacher. Very easy. <laughs> yes, all the students are following. All okay? All right, that's good. All right. Next, if it is a story tell, yeah, a, sto um, a story tell question. Let's look at this. You have done the clay marble and I know you all enjoy the clay marble mm -hmm. because it's filled with values. Keep okay? right in this. Last year's question. It's like coming home, mother said, with quiet wonder. 
describe how Nong Chan feels like home to Dara and her family. So this is basically a story tell question. Just understand whenever it's describing something, you, you tell what you see, what you hear, what you feel. Descriptions, that's describing it. So you describe. How was Nong Chan when they first came? Yeah? How was the refugee camp? What are the things that they saw? Okay? All right? Um, you know, some my favorite example, which my friends will always laugh at, is I always tell them, you know, the first thing that they saw is they saw the buffaloes wallowing in the mud. Mm -hmm. They saw children playing with the buffaloes. Yes, I can see you relate to it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And what else did they see? They saw women taking in the laundry. They saw people smiling, laughing, happy. Be. And this was in the midst of war, okay? And that's how when mother sees this, she says, it's like coming home. So what you see, what you hear, what you feel is what goes into a storytell mode, into a question that deals with descriptions, okay? Mm -hmm. Analyze it. Do a little bit. If you want to go into a higher scale, that analysis must come in literature, so mm -hmm. whereby you draw similarities between how Nong Chan is and how their home in the village was. So draw some similarities and don't forget, organize your answers in paragraphs. Okay, so I think that's clear to you. Do you have any questions on this? Any questions so far? All right, if you have no questions, I would, like, uh, I would like to give you a break and we would like to take a break and we'll be back in Road to Success SPM 2020. DDTV KPM DDTV KPM Bertemu kembali dalam Road to Success SPM 2020 bersama saya Wani Carey. Baiklah sebelum kita teruskan sesi pembelajaran kita hari ini, Wani nak ingatkan anda semua untuk sentiasa jaga SOP, basuh tangan, pakai hand sanitizer, pakai pelitup muka dan paling, paling penting jaga jarak sekurang-kurangnya 1 meter. Alright, teacher, all the students okay at home? Alright, let us proceed our lesson today, teacher. Very good. Okay. Uh, don't be nervous. Enjoy the <laughs> session, okay? All yes. right, smile. I can see your beautiful smiles mm. there. All right. All so right. we have looked at an A question. We have looked at a B question. Now let's look at a C question, okay? So mm -hmm. how are we going to organize our responses for a C question? Now, uh, Genli, how long would you take for a C question, Genli? How long, Genli? Okay, maybe Genli can unmute your mic. Uh, unmute your mic, uh, Genli. Right, how long would you take oh, for sorry. a C? Sorry, how long would you take for a C question? About 15 minutes. All right, okay, mm -hmm. so maybe you might take 15 to 18 minutes. All right, for a C question. Because in a C question, you are going to write more. You are going to analyze the question. You are going to give your personal response to the question. So which means you need more time to answer for a C question. Okay, so let's yeah. look at a, a C question. Flowers for Algernon. Okay, SPM 2016. Mm -hmm. And I love this question because it uh, opens your minds whereby you can either say, Yes or no. Okay. Mm. So question is, do you feel sorry for Charlie at the end of the story? Karishma, tell me, do you feel sorry for him? Yes, I do feel sorry for him. Okay. Why do you feel sorry for him? I feel sorry for Charlie because when he had his increased intelligence, he had it all, everything that he ever wanted to become smart. But then... At the end of the story, we see how that's taken away from him and he's left to be the same person he was before, the one that he was trying to improve. All right. Okay, very good, mm -hmm. Karishma. Well done. So you feel sorry for him. Is there anyone amongst you who does not feel sorry for him? Claire, assuming you don't feel sorry for him, what would you say? 
I if I assuming I didn't feel sorry for him, I would say that he should have known what he was getting himself to in the into in the first place when he went for the operation because even at the start he said that he knew that it was not going to be temporary. So at the end, when he becomes even worse than he was before, he should have um, expected it from the start. Okay, excellent. Very good, Claire and Karishma. Now, I don't know whether you realised it, but as you were giving your response, what you had done is you had given a personal response mm -hmm. to it. Okay? You had given a personal response whereby you had taken a stand first and then related it to why your opinion is such. Okay. Now, remember, all C questions in your introduction, and introductions are so important. In your introduction, you need to, number one, take a stand. Number two, if you can relate it to the real world. People like Charlie, why do you feel sorry for such people? Okay? Or when they uh, say they want to go for an experiment and things don't turn out the way they want it, why is it you do not feel sorry for them? So that is where your personalization comes in. Okay? Your opinions are what matters a lot in your C question. And thirdly, relate it to the text. Okay? Unknowingly, the two of you have done that. All three things have already gone into your introduction and then from your introduction you move on into your content points okay so what are your content points your content points will be your reasons so maybe you would like to take paragraph one reason number one paragraph two reason number two paragraph three reason number three so give your reasons and make sure that as you give your reasons, you support your reasons with textual evidence. Now, sometimes uh, students ask me, what's the textual evidence? Mm -hmm. Actually, it's simple. Textual evidence refers to your text, the evidence which is in your text. Mm -hmm. That is your textual evidence. So you cannot just simply talk about a text without having the evidence. Yeah. You cannot answer a question with general statements without referring to the text. Imagine if all of you are lawyers, mm -hmm. okay? When you go to court, can you just simply go and blabber without relating to what your client, um, you know, to what the court proceeding is? No way, no, isn't it? No, cannot, teacher. No way, right? <laughs> yes. So don't you think that's exactly how literature is? Yes. Right. Basically, the answer is already in the text, but the students have to know how to know which one is the answer. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Very good, Wani. You should do literature with us also. Yeah, you would enjoy I should. it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. So that's exactly how it is. Remember, Peel, point, evidence, Explain, explain and link and link, mm -hmm. link to the question so you can see it clearly in the C question how peel comes into effect okay all right so you have your content there right okay and finally you go into your conclusion a conclusion is always what we say tying all the loose ends together and giving a beautiful picture of how the slant of your answer was, okay? Now, if they ask you a question, do you feel sorry? Do not at one minute say, yes, I'm sorry for him. Next minute you say, no, I'm not sorry for him. And then in your conclusion, you say, I don't know what to feel for him. Mm -hmm. See? So your stand is not clear, yeah? Because you are wavering, you know, between yes and no, yes and no, and you make your own impression of what I've given you. <laughs> Don't do that. Be clear in your stand. This is my stand. I've taken this. I'm going to hold on to this. I'm going to give all the evidence for it. And this is how I present my answer. Okay? So remember, in today's world, presentation is so important, right? Yes. Yeah? Correct? Even mm -hmm. when you cook something also. Right. Whether it's tasty or not, it doesn't matter. 
But if the presentation is there, mm -hmm. everyone would go, wow. Yes, Isha, I believe presentation and also the first impression for yes. the examiner to read the student's answer is very important. Very important. Mm. Very good. Okay, so that's why the introduction is very important, right? Yes, Isha. Yeah? So it's just like an introduction is always, see the layout of an essay, whether it is literature, whether it is essays that you write for English, BM or whichever subject, yeah? The introduction and the conclusion, they are so, so important. Okay? Yes. All right. Next. Just to recap what we have spoken about so far on how to organize my responses. Remember, number one, know your characters very well. In a drama, in a short story, and even in a novel, know your characters very well. Know your themes. Okay? Know your themes. Know your events. What happened? Why did they run away from Nong Chan when the explosion dropped, uh, when the explosion happened? Why did they leave the village? What was the purpose for them to come to Nong Chan? So those are events that we have and always remember the answer to the WH questions. Who, what, where, when, how, which. Okay? All right. Know your values. Literature mm -hmm. is all about learning your values. Your themes and your values. Your values are related to your themes. Okay? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay? So values are related to your themes. So answer according to it. So for example, war. Yeah? What is the value that you learn from the theme of war? You learn something like, Jasmine, what do you learn from the theme of war? Um, I learned that war doesn't only destroy, it can also help create. Mm. For example, it created friendships and found families. Okay, excellent. Yeah. So what you have done is you have given two values here. The theme is war, but you have given two values. Number one, war destroys. Number two, amidst this destruction, friendships are built. Okay, right? New families, you know, I think in the clay marble, we have got what we say, fragments of families now become real families as new friendships are built. So that's something that you learn from literature. The values are there. And literature is such a beautiful subject. Yeah? <laughs> yes, sure. yes. Okay. Right. So you have your knowledge. Okay. How much do I write? Actually, it's unlimited. But again, it's back to answering the question. If they ask you A, don't give Z. Yeah? yeah. So answer the question. And don't be tied down to how many words must I give? How many paragraphs must I write? No, within the time allocated, A is approximately 5 minutes, B is 12 minutes, C is approximately 18 minutes. These are just approximate times that you have. So within that time, you give your responses. Write fast. Remember the first thing I said, whenever children come out of the exam hall, they will always come back to me and say, Tisha, I didn't have enough time to finish my work. Mm -hmm. This is where time management is very important. So have your watch in front of you. Make sure you keep looking at it for time. Okay? And make sure you spend more time for C and not for B. Mm -hmm. C questions, more marks. So more time. Okay well written the quality of your work yeah your answer is based on quality not quantity so the quality means how you respond to the question notice i keep repeating this you know how you respond yeah how you understand the question that's important I think any subject across the board, it goes like that. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right? Okay. Now we go to the most challenging part, which students say, poetry. But my question to you is, is it difficult? <laughs> is it difficult, Julia? Is poetry difficult? 
yeah, some of them are difficult. For example, the tiger. Right, the mm. tiger. But just imagine the tiger as a creature, you know, from the jungle who frightens you. But at the same time, you look at the tiger as someone who is able to uh, make you awestruck. Once you think of it like that, the tiger becomes a very easy home for you to deal with. Mm -hmm. Now, whenever we are doing poetry, remember, yeah, this is for all students in Malaysia who are doing the poem, yeah? yeah. There are three themes. You only focus on one theme, okay? So it could be nature, it could be people, it could be lessons in life. Only one theme and know all the six poems very well in that theme, okay? Now, when you're doing poetry, it's important for you to know what is the literal as well as the figurative meaning, okay? Know the themes, know the messages, yeah? And poetry is always like this. What is the impact of the poem on you? How do you feel about it? Mm -hmm. So that's where your personal response comes in, okay? Now, right. let's look at this quickly. Okay, let's look at this A question. Winter, I'm sure you all know your winter very well. Based on the extract, what happens to nature in winter? Quickly pick out three points. Okay, Marsha, quickly give me a point here. Point number one. Well, teacher, I couldn't see the... You can't see. Yeah. Okay. All right, never mind. I will go through it quickly with <laughs> you. All right? Okay. All right. okay. So we have got three points here. Mm -hmm. Question, what happens to nature in winter? Point number one, summer sweets are lost. Point number two, the forest boughs have shed their generation of the dead, meaning the forest boughs have shed their leaves. Okay? And point number three, we see the naked traceries which are spread against the stars. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the lines you know, but if you can paraphrase, no problem. If you find difficulty in paraphrasing, then just give what is there for you. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. All right. Very good. Okay. Mm. A B question. Remember, a B question can be either umbrella point or... Story telling. Simple question. Describe the richness of autumn. Mm -hmm. So how do we describe? So describe is always what you see, what you hear, you know, what you feel. Okay. So when we talk about describing the richness of autumn, we talk about a season that is filled with sights, activities and sounds. Okay. Now, sometimes students ask me, teacher, what's the difference between describe and explain? Describe, as I mentioned, is to say what I see, what I feel, what I hear, okay? Whereas explain will go a little bit further, whereby you say, how you felt about it? What do you think about it? See? So that's how explain is, yeah? explain you, analyze a little bit more. Okay? Mm -hmm. Right. All right. And the last one in a C question, let's look at this. Nature can bring happiness to man. Discuss this in relation to daffodils. Now, what are the things that you need to know? Ask yourself three questions. How? Why? What? Just ask yourselves these three questions. How does nature bring happiness? Why do I say nature brings happiness? Yes, and what examples can I use? Is that clear? All right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe you get a good scope on how exactly to answer this. Well, yeah. Let me look at mm -hmm. some of the mistakes. Common students mistakes. Do. Yeah, the common <laughs> mistakes. Number one is they don't answer according to the question. Mm. They don't answer according to your question. Just simply, you know, Roja? Yeah. Uh, Roja, you have got everything there, you know. Mm -hmm. You have got the cucumber there. You have got the turnip there. <laughs> you have got the tauhu there. And on top of everything, you have the peanut sauce on it. Mm -hmm. So they give me responses where everything is there and tell me, teacher, you choose what you want. <laughs> That's not answering the 
question. question. Okay? okay, all right. So answer according to the needs. Do not regurgitate. Regurgitate mm -hmm. means to vomit. Do not narrate the whole story. Go straight into answering the question. Okay, mm -hmm. analyze. Analyze the question. Paraphrase if you cannot remember the quotes. Nothing wrong in paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Never ever write a summary of the whole story or the novel or mm -hmm. the drama. We are not interested in your stories. Yeah. Okay. We want to see how the knowledge that you have, you use it to answer the question. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And don't ever give general statements without textual evidence. Mm -hmm. So your statements must always be supported by textual evidence. evidence. Okay? All right? And don't beat around the bush. Mm -hmm. Go straight to the point. You know, it's like catching a bull by its horns mm -hmm. and you're saying, this, I am brave enough to give you my answer. And make sure you take a stand and give your personal response okay mm -hmm. so right. these are the things you must bear in mind when you are answering yes all right so that is a very great explanation and lesson from our teacher Renuka and teacher I would like to thank you so much for all the knowledge you have given with us today and to all the students from SMK Convent Klang um, do you have any question last question to ask your teacher all right, teacher. Maybe we want to hear uh, an advice or a wish from you to all the students out there that, that will be sitting SPM starting tomorrow, right. teacher. Yes, okay, good. To all the SPM students, yeah? Do not be afraid. You have done your work, okay? Now, what you should do is at the 11th hour, don't panic. If mm -hmm. you do panic, you enter the paper and you see it's a, you know, the paper looks blank. Yeah. Take in a deep breath and release it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Take in deep breaths to calm yourselves. Mm -hmm. Right? And then you answer. Don't worry. You have done extremely well in studying. Now the court is yours. Enjoy what you are going to do. I'm sure you will enjoy answering the questions, whether yes. it's physics, bio, maths, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, mm. go enjoy it. Give it your all and show you know, you understand and you know, and you will do perfectly well. All the best. Enjoy answering questions and you will do very well. Okay. Bye. All right. Thank you so much, Teacher Renuka. Thank you, student from SMK Convent Klang. Thank you so much. I wish you all the best, and may you succeed with the with the great results. All right, and make your parents proud of you. Okay. Jadi kepada pelajar di luar sana, challenge challenge SPM yang akan menduduki SPM bermula esok dengan kertas bahasa Melayu satu ya. Uh, Wani nak ucapkan semoga berjaya macam Wani sendirilah apa yang Wani buat uh, satu hari sebelum exam. Paling penting adalah untuk tenang dan yang paling penting kena minta maaf dengan guru-guru dan juga ibu bapa. Okey, kena minta maaf dengan kawan-kawan juga. Uh, itu dia mendapatkan restu daripada semua orang sekeliling kita sangatlah penting untuk bagi ketenangan dalam Dewan Peperiksaan. Itulah ada dari saya, Wani Keri and I wish you all the best. Tapi jangan ke mana-mana kerana selepas ini, kita akan imbas kembali kertas Bahasa Melayu 1 hanya dalam Road to Success SPM 2020. Jumpa lagi. All the best semua. Bye-bye. Didik TV KPM Hi, my name is Agnes Christina. I'm the mother of Karishma Rahman. I personally hope that my daughter uses the skills that she has gained to studying literature and English and excels in whatever she does in the future. My name is Gladys Jacob. I'm the mother of Claire Leilani Gomez. She will be taking a literature and English subject for SPM this year. The subject has really helped her in the development of the language, in the way she speaks and in the way she presents herself. With all the hard work she has put in and with the help of her teachers, I really hope that she will do well in the literature exam this year. Thank you. Didi TV KPM.